Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch video and today we're taking a look at the Patek Philippe World Time. So as with all my reviews, let's go back in time now and take a look at the history of the World Time, um, not just from Patek, in fact, uh, we're going to go back to the 1800s and around the 1800s watches were already starting to show multiple time zones um, on one piece. It wasn't really though until the 1930s that we worked out a way, or, or the watchmaking industry worked out a way of making it a bit more stylized, a bit more easy to read, uh, you know, multiple time zones on one timepiece. Um, and that was kind of courtesy of the watch designer, uh, Louis Cotier, uh, who designed a watch that was essentially the world time or a world time movement and timepiece that could just display uh, time zones or multiple time zones from around the world um, in fact, 24 time zones on a single dial with also the local time in each of those time zones. He used the 24 time zones around the world um, and displayed them not just in kind of one, two, three, four, five. He displayed them in terms of their city. And he, there are actually 37 time zones across the world. But he displayed the main kind of core 24 uh, countries um, and, or cities really um, around the world and used them to display you know, the different time zones. Uh, which was a much more easy way of reading the dial or, or reading a different world time zone. And then in the 40s also he developed a system uh, that used two crowns and it allowed you to independently adjust the, uh, the local time in the center of the dial and also the outer section of the dial which displayed the 24 hour or world time. And then in 1953 Louis Cotier helped Patek Philippe release the reference 2523 and that was essentially Patek Philippe's first world time watch. And it featured a dual crown system. So uh, like I said before, the same uh, design that, uh, that Louis had created was to be able to have the, the local time adjusted by one crown and the other crown would adjust the world time. And since that reference 2523, Patek Philippe has become kind of the most iconic brand for uh, world time watches. Um, skipping a few years on to 2000, Patek revamped the uh, world time watch gave it a new fresh look and, and new life but kept the essence of that 2523 uh, you know the original world time and that was the reference 5110 which is what we're looking at today um, we're looking at the rose gold variation but they released a white gold and yellow gold variation of this watch also this reference is kind of seen as the best modern day or the, the most pure modern day um, world time patek you can buy it's 37 millimeters it's pretty small um, but very, very classic and very beautiful. It featured a stunning, stunning dial, but the essence of that 2523, like I said, was really there inside this watch. Um, this was replaced six years later in 2006 by the reference 5130, which featured a slightly larger case size, a slightly updated dial, and, and just a look in general, a few different features they updated on that watch. Uh, that actually remained in production for 10 years until 2016, when it was replaced by the reference 5230 and I think the 5230 is one of the most beautiful world time watches ever made. Uh, the dial on that watch is absolutely stunning, the case is beautiful. Um, but we're looking at the 5110 today and that's the one that was released between 2000 and 2006. And this is actually a very late model released in 2006, so it's a final production year example. Uh, it's a relatively rare piece because it wasn't in production for that long, uh, but definitely not as rare as that original 52. Oh, sorry, 2523, which is extremely rare. Let's take a look at the features of this watch and how to use the world time feature. Uh, so we're gonna start with the clasp on this model. We've got a Calatrava Cross um, deployant clasp in rose gold, all polished finish, absolutely stunning. One of the most beautiful clasps in the whole industry. Um, pretty comfortable. My only thing that I don't love about these clasps is sometimes they do protrude a little bit out from uh, the the leather. They don't always sit completely flat and flush to the leather. They can sometimes kind of sit out at an angle and that means they can become a bit of a scratch magnet. Uh, you do have to be very careful with, with these clasps versus something like a tang buckle. Personally, I much prefer the tang buckle or debuckle from Patek, just in all simple polish finish. Uh, I just prefer the much more simple look that that clasp has, but the Color Travel Cross deployment clasp is absolutely beautiful. Uh, moving now onto our leather strap, we've got a stunning deep black uh, gloss crocodile uh, strap. Um, really, really beautiful. As always, Patek Philippe produces the finest leather straps. Um, they are so soft and supple. And when you get a used example like this one, uh, they become even more soft and supple. 
Moving now on to our case, we've got a 37 millimeter case size on this watch. It's in an all polished finish in 18 karat rose gold. This watch actually features a clear crystal case back so we can see the movement. And this movement is of course finished to the exceptional Patek Philippe levels. Uh, everything is hand finished and, and looks absolutely stunning on this movement. Um, the movement also features a micro rotor as well, which is quite unique um, to, to a few of the pieces in the Patek collection. Not many of them feature the micro rotor. The micro rotor actually allows them to make the movement slightly thinner than if it was a full size rotor. Um, and this movement is exceptionally thin, which is why the watch is able to be so thin as well. The case is pretty simple. It's very, very elegant. We've got nice, long, elegant uh, lugs that kind of extend out from the case. Um, the all polished finish looks absolutely beautiful with our nice uh, semi-domed um, crystal on this watch as well. Uh, it's not quite as domed as the original five, uh, 2523 um, from the 1950s, but a really, really beautiful watch design overall. Uh, I really love the case and obviously 37 millimeters is quite small in, in comparison to today's standard. So the newer version, um, the, the newer version, the 5230 is actually much bigger than, or a couple millimeters bigger than this one. But this 37mm still wears really, really nice on the wrist. Um, I think it probably would suit a wrist size up to kind of 19 or maybe even 20 centimeters, um, all the way down to 13 centimeters. So definitely a wide range of, of wrists that this would suit. Um, moving now on to our dial. The dial on this watch is absolutely stunning. We've got this beautiful, beautiful pattern in the center of the dial, which is actually one of my favorite features on this whole watch. And in fact, it makes it one of my favorite watches from Patek, full stop. Uh, the pattern they've created there is absolutely beautiful. It's kind of um, geometrically amazing. It almost is like a flower in some ways when you look at it from certain angles and certain light. It's pretty difficult to show it completely on camera. Uh, you have to kind of see it in person to really appreciate how beautiful that actually is. I love the simplicity that this watch kind of is almost two watches in one in terms of its dial. That center dial is like its own watch, you know, really simple two-hand design, very, very legible. Um, and then the outer section of the dial with the two kind of rings within that outer section of the dial, the 24 hour scale, and then our cities, our worldwide cities, um, is kind of like a separate watch altogether as well. Uh, really, really stunning design. Um, I love the simplicity, even though it is very complex, you know, from, from a distance, uh, actually when you break it down and realize what the information is that you need from that dial, it is very, very easy to read. Let's take a quick look actually at how to use this um, World Time watch. Um, this generally is the same for most World, world Time watches, whether they're from Patek or not. Um, but this is, is the way that this one works, the, the 5110 reference. Um, to set the World Time, the thing I'd recommend to do probably is to use your 10 o'clock indicator, so sorry, your, your selector at 10 o'clock, uh, the button, press it in and that will allow the uh, movement to switch around those outer rings, essentially. It does a few things, in fact. When you press that button, it rotates the center ring, which is your 24 hour scale. Uh, it rotates that one click anti-clockwise, so one hour anti-clockwise. It rotates the outer ring also, so the, the cities um, one stop anti-clockwise as well. And at the same time as doing that, it also um, advances the hour hand in the center of the dial uh, one hour forward. So it does three things at once, which is pretty complex. And that was why it was so unique uh, that Louis Cotier uh, created that back in, in the 1940s or kind of even 30s. So essentially what you wanna do when you're setting this watch is press the button uh, or, or the pusher on the side of the watch at around 10 o'clock um, until you reach the city. So the city that you want to uh, be in. So say you're doing London time for us, for example, we would rotate the bezel around um, or the outer section of the dial round until we reach London at 12 o'clock. So the city you're in, your home city, must sit at 12 o'clock on the dial. Um, once you've reached that, you can then, I would then adjust your time on your actual watch itself, so the center of the dial, to your local time. And in doing so, you now have the local, or the watch essentially set for the rest of the world. Um, then if you wanted to then check the time in, uh, say, Los Angeles, or set your watch to Los Angeles, you then rotate your bezel around a couple more clicks, um, or sorry, your outer section of the dial by pressing the button until you reach Los Angeles. Um, the other way you could do it would be just simply to read off the 24 hour scale that's on the inner section of that dial um, and look up towards where uh, the, the city is that you're looking for, and that will allow you to tell the time really easily um, what it is in that city just by looking at that 24 hour scale. So that's the easiest way to read this watch 
but you can also set it to that actual time zone if you wanted to just by pressing the button. So that concludes the features and how to set the watch. Let's take a look now at whether or not I would own this piece. Um, I think I definitely would own this watch. It's a real classic piece of Patek Philippe history. Um, it is obviously an exceptionally beautiful and kind of simple watch. Um, it's very complex in terms of its movement uh, and maybe it's dull at first glance, but it's a very simple, elegant piece that's actually very, very useful, uh, especially for someone who travels a lot. This would be a really, really great tool to have on their wrist, uh, maybe even more so than a GMT Master from Rolex. Uh, that kind of additional complexity actually makes this watch much easier to use than something like a GMT Master. Uh, the fact you can just straight away read off anywhere on the dial and find out what that time, what the time is in that city straight away is just a really, really useful feature. I think it's more than just a simple reference in the Patek Philippe collection. I think it kind of has a bit more of a deeper history uh, than it first comes across. Um, so I definitely own it. I absolutely love all the iterations that they've ever made of of the, the well time. Of course, that first reference 2523 is one of the most beautiful, um, in my opinion. But this one that we're looking at is a really, really nice classic example. If I was to choose any of them, I'd probably choose either this um, 5110 reference in rose gold like we see today uh, in the example we're looking at. Um, pr probably the one I would choose though above all of them is the current reference, which is the 5230. I love the case on that watch. The dial is arguably even more beautiful than on this watch. Um, and I just love the overall case size and the dimensions and how it wears on my wrist. That is a truly, truly beautiful watch. Thanks guys for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think of this world time from Patek Philippe. Uh, do you prefer this older reference or do you prefer the modern reference or the 5130 in between? Um, let us know what other Patek Philippe's you'd like us to review. And as always, if you're interested in this watch or any other watch in the Patek Philippe collection, then don't hesitate to contact us. Our details are in the description. And also at the end of the video, it'd be a pleasure to call this watch into stock for you. Thank you.